Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, thank you for tuning into another We Go podcast, YouTube, aka What Else is Going On. I am your girl, Taria. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm happy to be down here talking to y'all again while I wait for Safe Light Auto to come and replace the windshield in my car. Y'all say a prayer for me. Lord Jesus, just. They say between 12 and five. And you know what? Maybe God is saying, since you don't want to slow down, we go, because I really thought I was going to be able to pick like an hour window, you know, like they would get here at one and it may take an hour or two because my husband's had it done before years ago though. Right. But they said, no, we're going to give you a five hour window. So I'm praying that they come closer to 12, but also knowing that I have things to do, videos to make, shows to watch, some things that I want to take care of around the house and I haven't really slowed down enough to do them. So maybe this is my way of being slowed down and also letting my body uh, rest. Shout out, I believe, and I may be saying it wrong. I want to pull it up right now. Cause I was like, y'all care about my health. I appreciate y'all. Miss Cat New Jersey said, I basically need it to slow down. <laughs> I was, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I, I am. I am. But, you know, just real quick before we get into some of the things that I actually wanted to talk to y'all about yesterday, you know, life has a way of um, making you think, reflect, right? And also ask yourself, do you really believe what you want to manifest over yourself, whether you're a person of faith, Christianity, or, or any other uh religions or what have you, or you're just a spiritual person, right? And the things that you want to manifest, do you really believe them? You know, I have some days when I wake up and I've been like that since I was younger, believing that anything I wanted or thought, I put my faith in who I believe in God and that it was going to happen. And I just, now sometimes me not doing my part would get in the way because I felt like, well, I'm good at doing such and such. People see it. So, you know, what have you. Um, but then, you know, as you get older, you realize you got to put the work in, right? So I wake up most mornings not being deterred by age, my age, and saying, you know, I believe that what I want to manifest for my life still is going to manifest. It's going to happen. I believe it. I have faith. And then you have your days when you're like, you know what? There's millions of billions of people in the world and millions of those people had dreams that they believed would manifest too. And they just did not, even though they put the work in. So is it really going to happen? So, you know, you just kind of go back and forth between those feelings. But I guess, you know, at the end of the day, I've come to the realization while I'm living, I'm just still going to choose to believe because the alternative is living a life where you feel like you're not going to grow in the area you want to grow in or succeed. You know, there's always... When you have hope, there's always something to possibly look forward to. Anyway, didn't mean to spill all that on y'all, but just want to encourage anybody else who who goes back and forth, swings between the pendulum of it's going to happen and what if it doesn't happen? You know, I, I drive, so I have a lot of time to think as I'm taking passengers, picking up passengers, <clears throat> then putting their stories on me or just listening um, in general. And... Yeah. So I just want to encourage anybody who's watching, just keep going, do it and do whatever you have to do and just trust that what you're believing for and manifesting will work out. Um, unlike Miss Portia Williams, who believed that she had um, manifested this life of a Nigerian princess and now her prince is dragging her through the mud. So let's get into it. First up, yesterday, Portia posted, and I'm sure you guys know about this, but I want to talk to y'all about it. So happy Wednesday. If a person concealed criminal past and provided fake identification for a green card, is it still a valid green card in the U.S.? Hashtag inquiring minds. Child, we know that Mr. Simon said, eh, 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 no, you don't. So he then posted, I'm going to need, I'm a, that's funny. I'm going to need people who think that, who think there are 265 days in a year. Stay out of understanding complex U.S. immigration laws above your mediocre mind. And then his caption was, of course, what was I thinking? Only a housewife trying to pull the check of a real housewife. 
I wasn't quite sure <laughs> what he meant with that. Is he calling himself a housewife? Like, I don't know. And then he posted the clip. The next slide he had was of Portia saying that there was 265 days in the year. At least this was funny. Like the dramatics in the courts. I mean, I'm sick of it all actually, but I did have a laugh when I saw what she posted and um, his response. Now I will say this. I too had a question, right? Because she said, if a person concealed criminal past and provided fake identification for a green card, is this still a valid green card in the US? And that's what I've been wondering. According to what we talked about, what, a month or two ago that he provi he allegedly, allegedly, allegedly provided fake, uh, uh, provided fake ID, like a fake identification to obtain um, a green card. He had been denied one before due to criminal past. So then he came back by a different name. Um, so does that make it invalid? Because it's not, allegedly, it's not him. It's somebody else. So that's, I want, so I'm not going to lie. I had the same thought as Portia when we read that article a couple of months ago saying that's what happened. So I will say in Portia's defense on this, now she was doing it to be messy though. I really have questions like, is the green card valid? I don't know anybody out there that knows anything about that. I, I just would automatically assume it wouldn't be. And it doesn't, and if, and if it's not valid, it doesn't seem like, I mean, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it doesn't seem like anything is happening like with that. So child, who knows? Moving on, child, she sang only in love and war. How many years ago? Well, it seemed like she is in love and war with this new man. Tamar Braxton responds to fiance calling her out over shady Carlos King interview. So remember, I told y'all a couple of days ago, I watched Carlos's interview with Tamar, their live show. Carlos was calling him Colonel Sanders. Tamar was saying to the audience, y'all don't like that man, do y'all? Y'all don't like that man. And she was saying they decided to keep their relationship private. So she didn't say anything shady about him, but she let Carlos, she, kind of, she didn't check Carlos when he was like, you know, I see him and I want a piece of chicken with coleslaw, corn, all that stuff. She didn't say anything to Carlos, right? So then JR came back with the post child calling Tamar all like a lot of shade towards Tamar. I mean, at one point, because in the Carlos interview, I told y'all that Tam Carlos told Tamar he wanted her to have a hoe face or have you ever had a hoe face? She said no. And JR's response to that was their hoe phase was my in love phase. That sounded like he was calling her a hoe. So Tamar then responds to JR. If you don't know what JR said, look a couple days back. I did a video detailing all of what he said. So Tamar, now this is from vibe.com. Tamar Braxton is demonstrating some serious personal growth in her reaction to being called out by her fiance, Jeremy J.R. Robinson, after participating in what the latter considered a shady interview conducted by Carlos King. So I guess they're still engaged. I don't know how the way that he has now basically like embarrassed her publicly twice on the internet and then linking up with her out with Tommy. Anyway, <sighs> rather than clapping back at her bow, Braxton apologized for the transgression while explaining being in a healthy relationship while also loving herself is a new experience resulting in their partnership suffering through trial and error on her part. She said, when you truly love someone, hurting the person that you love is far worse than being hurt by the one you love. So I'm going to read that again. She said, when you truly love someone, hurting the person that you love is far worse than being hurt by the one you love. I'm new to true love and loving myself. I'm so sorry that it's you that has to feel the trial and error along with, as she added, along with the heart, the broken heart and teary eye emoji. So she said, I'm so sorry that it's you that has to feel the trial and error. And then she had the broken heart emoji and the teary eye emojis. She said, I wish for the opportunity to give an apology and be forgiven in all, in caps. In relationships, we take being forgiven for granted. It is a blessing to be able to say, I'm sorry and see another day in the war of love in this together. I mean, love don't have to be war though. No matter how much I feel like I was right, 
you felt wronged and I got to respect that. I'm not embarrassed for being open about how I feel. I'm embarrassed of how I made you feel. I'm sorry. With the sad face and then a heart and then TBR. Y'all. I'm going to... I'm going to just read you a part of what he said, even though I went over in the video, just to remind y'all. So Tamar didn't said all this. She's sorry. She's new to love. She's new to true love and loving herself. Um, it hurts worse when you hurt the one you love than being hurt by the one you love. Um, she said, I got to respect that. I'm not embarrassed for being open about how I feel. I'm embarrassed of how I made you feel. I'm sorry. One of the things he said is, Truth is, they are not ready for me to tell my side of the story. I keep choosing grace, but I can only be thrown under the bus and not defended for so much for so much longer. I'll be Colonial Sanders and give you some chicken to eat with my story. Keep poking the bear. And then he says, um, a man can only take so much. I always want to protect even when we aren't together, but stop allowing indirects to throw me under the bus. Your shade creates more uncertainty and your people thrive on stating what you never say. I'm too graceful and that's coming to an end. Thanks, CK. Then he said, apologies mean nothing when you come from my foundation. Tired of protecting people and getting on. Their whole phase was during my in love phase. He said all that. And she came back with an apology of her own for hurting his feelings. And she said, I'm not embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for how I made you feel. I'm not going to take that away from her. If she feels bad, like in that moment when the audience was going in and all I said was, dad, y'all really don't like that man. Or Carlos shading him, calling him um, Colonel Sanders. If she felt, if she's reflecting back like, dang, I should have spoken up for my man. That's her right to do that. However, this man that's supposed to love and protect you decided that the way to let you know how he was feeling was not to come to you in private, not to say, yo, why wouldn't you check him? Why wouldn't you say something to the audience? Why wouldn't you defend me or our love? He decided to get on the internet and basically call you a hoe that he was no longer going to protect and that he's had a side of a story to tell. And then you come back and say you're embarrassed for how you made him feel. And this is what you call a healthy relationship. This is the second time this man has come down to the internet to embarrass you. Miss ma'am, this is the second time. So you're loving yourself. You literally say that uh, wait a minute. I'm new to true love and loving myself. So this is loving yourself by letting this man embarrass you twice publicly. And now you coming back to apologize to him. Different strokes for different folks. I get it. Um, I just feel like, I I'm just going to be honest. I feel like you should be embarrassed, Tamar. Because that's wild to me that this man couldn't come to you. And even if he did come to you privately, he still had to make it for the public to see. Dealing with a Simon and a Portia, Jr. and Tamar. Jr. wants to be seen. He's got money. And I have said this and I'll keep saying, me and my mom had this conversation. You can be rich, have all the money in the world. But if you want to be famous, the money is not going to be enough for you because you want to be famous. And JR wants to be out there in that limelight. So I just, Tamar, do better for yourself, for real. Just my thoughts, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Let's jump on over here. So you know how Nicki Minaj um, says a lot of times people sabotage her, um, her recent incident in Manchester. She felt like it was sabotage. And I'm not saying that it's never the case. I do believe that. It probably has been the case. I just wonder, is it every single time? Well, let's talk about someone who actually was kind of sabotaged. Um, sabotaged. AMC Theater CEO admits to sabotaging Beyonce's Renaissance concert film while coveting Taylor Swift's film. So again, this is according to MadamNoir.com. Um, Adam Aron, the CEO of AMC Theaters, has shockingly admitted to leaking sensitive information about Beyonce's Renaissance concert film. 
According to reports obtained by the source, the leaks nearly sabotaged the concert's film's success. The admission comes just after the successful and secret release of Taylor Swift's heiress concert film. AMC managed to keep Swift's concert a secret, and Aaron explained the secrecy is essential to a film's success. The theater chain has plans to release two to three concert films annually. We couldn't blow Taylor's secret, Aaron said. He described maintaining confidentiality as a strategic move. And those theater chains who groused at you, they grossed $100 million in ticket sales. It's not like they sold diddly. When Beyonce dropped her Renaissance film, though, the AMC executive admitted that the secret wasn't kept as well as it should have been. AMC gave several of its competitors an early heads up about Beyonce's film's upcoming release to prevent the tension caused by Swiss film being released. So you made Beyonce the sacrificial lamb. Although they took precautions to try and keep it contained, Aaron admitted at least half a dozen movie circuits leaked the news. Beyonce was seriously thinking about not doing the movie at all because the secret was blown, so they didn't keep their word. Aaron called the leak a primary source of frustration between the AMC team and Beyonce since they jeopardized the successful release of Beyonce's film. Swift's heiress concert film grossed a lot of profit with significant ticket sales, future showing further showing the secretive approach's importance. To support their ambitious release schedule vision, AMC put together a distribution team to gain exclusive advanced knowledge of concert films like Swift and Beyonce. This allows the AMC chain to sell tickets before its competitors do. AMC's new move into film distribution will be a bold expansion of its business model, but it has also increased tension between AMC theaters and its more traditional Hollywood partners who feel AMC is pushing too far into their territory. Forget all that. You admitted that you sabotaged Beyonce's Renaissance concert film because you wanted Taylor Swift's film. I wonder what's going to happen now. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not saying anything should or shouldn't. I'm just wondering what the backlash will be because I can guarantee you if it was the other way around and yes I'm going to say it if it was the other way around and this man came out to admitting to sabotaging Taylor's concert film because he wanted Beyonce's heads would roll at AMC all the way up the ladder that is just wild to me not surprising unfortunately but just wild y'all let me know what y'all think Y'all, did y'all see abcnews.com? Black men told to leave flight, sue American Airlines, claiming racial discrimination. Three black men are suing American Airlines, claiming they were discriminated against when ordered to leave a plane in January. Black passengers who were briefly ordered off of an American Airlines plane in January sued the airline Wednesday, which was yesterday alleging that they were victims of racial discrimination. Three of the men filed a lawsuit in federal court in New York. They said they were told to leave a plane waiting to take off in Phoenix and noticed five other black men who also had been ordered off the flight. The three who did not know each other and had been sitting in different parts of the plane said an airline employee told them they were removed because a flight attendant had complained about a passenger's body odor. So, Three men are suing. They were removed off the plane. When they got off, they noticed five other black men. These three black men didn't know each other and were sitting in different parts of the plane. And they were told that they were removed because a flight attendant, they were removed because a flight attendant had complained about a passenger's body odor. The men say they responded that it appeared they were targeted for removal solely because of their race. American offered to rebook them but when it became clear after about an hour that there were no other available flights to New York that evening, they were allowed to reboard the plane, according to the lawsuit filed by Public Citizen, a consumer advocacy group founded by Ralph Nader. If American Airlines received a complaint about a black male passenger with offensive body odor but could not verify the complaint, the solution should, have not, should not have been to eject eight separate black men from the plane. Susan uh, Huda, an employment law attorney in Washington, D.C., who is representing the three men, said, American said it was looking into the claims. We take all claims of discrimination very seriously and want our customers to have a positive experience when they choose to fly with us, the airline said in a statement. Our teams are currently investigating the matter as the claims do not reflect our core values 
or our purpose of caring for people. Now in 2017, the NAACP warned black travelers about flying on American, claiming that several African-American passengers had experienced discrimination by the airline. American promised changes and the civil rights group later lifted the advisory. So again, we have eight black men on a plane, a flight attendant complained of a passenger's odor. So eight, so all eight, so eight black men were, I don't know if it was only eight on there, but eight black men were moved off of the plane. Three of them that were sitting in separate sections, I don't know if the other five were or not, are suing. Now you mean to tell me, could they not identify who or where the odor was coming from? Because if they're sitting in three different sections of the plane, like how far? Do you mean one up front, one in the middle, and one in the back? Do you mean two in one section, one in another? Like, I just don't understand. Like, I need more. Because for me, from where I'm sitting, just reading what I'm reading, clearly the fl the flight attendant couldn't identify where the smell was coming from. Because if she could, she would have had that person get up, right? Which I didn't even know. You can, you can do that on a plane. Somebody, if somebody is stinking like that and tell them they, they got to deboard, they can't fly only for them to hold. So the flight attendant can't identify where the smell is coming from clearly. So eight black men have to get off the plane. They offer to rebook them only to see after about an hour that there were no more flights and allow them to rebook. When I tell you if I was a passenger on that plane, I would have been livid because they had to set them back. They waited an hour, almost an hour to try to rebook them. And no one said, I wanna know, did the smell, when they got off, did the smell leave? Did the smell come back? Did they ever identify where the smell came from? So I'm definitely gonna be following because I wanna see what happens with this lawsuit because that is again from what i just read and from where i'm sitting it looks like the flight attendant smelled somebody's body odor couldn't identify it and eight black men had to get off the plane and now three of those three of those black men are suing from where i'm sitting that's what it looks like y'all let me know what y'all think y'all let me know what y'all think about this y'all let me know what y'all think about the amc admitting to sabotaging beyonce's concert film because they coveted taylor swift's Eris film. Let me know what y'all think about Miss Tamar Braxton and her apology to JR after his shade. And I feel like I already know how y'all feel about Simon and Portia. Simon is dragging her. Portia gonna have to be a lot smarter, honey, to play with Simon in that arena, at least. He an old school player. So he like from the Himalaya, like for he girl, I don't think you know what you got yourself into. Y'all, I will be back later. Um, again, just say, keep your girl and your thoughts and y'all prayers. And I will do the, I mean, you know, good things. Cause you know, you don't want everybody to pray for you, but you know, keep me in your positive manifestations and I will do the same for y'all. I love y'all and I will be back later. I am still pissed off. Okay. I'm still pissed off that that bleach blonde bad, what is it? Bleach blonde, bad built butch body, bravo, decided to pause Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, bravo. I called you, you bleach blonde, uh, bad built butch body. Y'all decided to take something, talking directly to y'all, decided to take Summer House Martha's Vineyard off for what speaking of which i will be joining my girl el mirasaki on her show tonight um stripped on youtube s-t-r-i-p-p-e-d i'm gonna post it um i'll be joining her and a couple other people it is her let me let me get it right because i want to get it right so y'all know hold on one second child i got to find the flyer i will be joining her, uh, I'll be joining L, the Z activist, and House of Aaron tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, to talk about Bravo. 
and uh, their treatment of melanated shows and specifically getting into the summer house of it all, Martha's Vineyard, since that's what was recently paused. So I hope to see y'all in the place again tonight. My girl, El Marisaki, um, stripped on YouTube, me, the Z activist, House of Aaron, and L. So I hope to see y'all then. But I will see y'all in a little bit with another video. Talk to y'all later. See ya.